Okay, dear comrades, uh, it's my pleasure to announce uh, the panel about capitalism, socialism, and democracy. Uh, we, we have four speakers Lydia from Workers and Punks University, Slovenia, uh, Domagoj from uh, Baza za Radničko Inicijativo i Demokratizaciju, i onda Darka, Centra za Politiko Emancipacije, i, i Sasha is one of those, uh, they are both from Serbia. Um, <laughs> 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 do you speak English? Maybe because, uh, because we will reach broader audience when when yeah. the, when the video of this. Okay. Yeah, we were told by organizers we have to do it okay. in English. So, yeah. Okay, so the first in line is, is dark, and without further ado, the floor is yours. Thanks. Uh, okay, um, I will try to, to, um, to argue uh, that the democracy and the capitalism isn't possible. So, um, let's, uh, let's start with the economic crisis, because in these days you cannot avoid it. Uh, economic crisis brings to the surface of all uh, uh, surface all of the contradictions of capitalism. This also results in the crisis of the politi political legitimacy. And this political legitimacy in the capitalism is based upon the belief that the democracy is the inherent part of the capitalist system of social relations. If we want to examine this idea, this belief, we must first understand the logic of the capitalist production process and to try to find out whether democracy is the part of the process. Uh, for the liberal theoreticians, democracy is the result of the free market. The, uh, they claim that democracy is based upon the voluntary exchange of free individuals. The role of the elected government is to ensure the conditions for this exchange to occur. In this sense, democracy is seen as the protection of the individual so so sovereignty uh, of the market participation, participants. Uh, democracy does uh, mean the involvement of the uh, members of society in the process of decision making, but in the market economy, the, that decision making is mediated uh, by, by the market. Uh, the sellers, uh, the buyers, uh, come in, uh, at the market and uh, with their uh, needs to satisfy, and the buyers, and the buyers, <laughs> and the sellers are, uh, should satisfy their needs. Uh, and on the surface, free market does appear as, uh, as the exchange of the free individuals. As Marx noted, uh, the market is, uh, quote, the exclusive realm of freedom, equality, property and benefit. Freedom, because both buyer and seller of a commodity, let us say of labor power, are determined only by their own free will. They contract as free persons who are equal before the law. Equality, because each uh, enters uh, into relation with the other, as with the simple owner of commodities, and the exchange equivalent for equivalent. Property, because each disposes only of what is his own, and Bentham, because each looks only to his own advantage. The only force bringing them together and putting them into relationship with each other is the selfishness, the gain, and the private interest of each. Each play, uh, pays heed to himself only, and no one worries about the others." End of quote. In the minds of the liberal theoreticians, the free market represents the ideal way of organizing the economic activity in the society because, according to them, if everyone, everyone follows their own interest, it will ensure the best uh, for the whole of society. But this view disregards the fact that those individuals that appear in the market are not in the equal position. Capitalism, as its uh, precondition, requires the existence of the group of people that are free in double sense. They are legally free, meaning that they own their labor capacity, and they are also free in the sense that they do not own the means of production. This structural, co structural coercion forces them to sell the, uh, their labor capacity, their labor power to the owner of the means of production in exchange for the means of subsistence. And so this structural co coercion forces them to come back to the labor market as sellers over and over again in order to ensure this exist uh, their existence. Because of this, owner of capital and owner of labor of power are not equal in the market. It is a buyer's market in which the owner of capital has an advantage. Uh, but this inequality can uh, even be better seen uh, once we leave the market and we enter the sphere of production. As Marx once again said, uh, quote, quote, uh, when we leave this sphere uh, uh, of simple circulation, of exchange of commodities, 
a certain change takes place, or so it appears, in the physiognomy of our dramat uh, dramatis personae. He who was previously the money owner now strides out in front as a capitalist, the possessor of labor power, follows as his worker. The one smirks self-importantly and is intent on business. The other is timid and holds back, like someone who has uh, brought his own hide to market and knows he has nothing else to expect but a uh, tanning." End of quote. In the sphere of the capitalist production, there is uh, the despotic rule of capital over, la over labor. Because he was the one who bought the labor power, capitalist has the right to organize the process of production and to appropriate the results of that process. Workers have no say in this, and the goal of the capitalist is not the satisfaction of the needs of the society, but the maximization of profit, that is, accumulation of the surplus value produced by the workers. The process of capitalist production, as described, does not include democratic participation. All of uh, the decisions are made by the owner of capital in his interest of profit making. So where, is, uh, where in this is the place for democracy? It can only come from outside. And if we look at the history of the capitalist development, we can see that democracy in the form of universal suffrage was won through the class struggle. Through the struggle of organized workers and other groups, such as organized feminist groups, who managed to win uh, the right to vote, and in that way to insert their interest upon capital. But the uh, organized labor has never managed to go as far as to free itself from the dependency on the accumulation of capital. As we can see in the history of the welfare state, uh, the so-called golden age of capitalism, workers managed to assert some of their interests through the distribution of the results of the process of production. But after the economic crisis of the 1970s, the capital again started the offensive with, uh, with the goal to undo all the benefits that workers managed to win for themselves. Uh, and to conclude, if we want to ha have a real democracy, one uh, in which the member society can decide on how this uh, society should be organized, it has to include the economic democracy as well, the ability uh, of the direct producers to decide how to allocate the rest resources of the society and how to organize the process of production in order, in order to satisfy the needs and develop the whole of society. This form of democracy cannot be achieved inside the capitalist system of social relations. We have to look for an alternative. Okay, thank you very much. Sasha is next. Okay, um, if we want to think about socialism as this other kind of society that we strive for, it seems that there are two possible ways. On the one hand, we could begin by focusing on differences and specificities of this other kind of society, which distinguish it from the capitalist society that we live in. On the other hand, we can start by taking into account the attributes, the representations, the values that are ascribed to capitalism in some way, that are used for its legitimation, but that, we feel, are distorted and not really achieved. Then, we could try to think of socialism as a kind of society in which these values, are, uh, uh, which are already appreciated, are truly realized. And then, uh, in the end, we could, come, uh, uh, we could come to the specific type of organization of society that socialism is, and, that, and its difference from capitalism necessary for the realization of these values. If we go this other way around, we can start with two notes. One, capitalism represents itself as a society of economic freedom. Everybody can make it, they say. But really, it is a society of structural coercion, as Darko said, where a person is forced to, to sell his labor so that he can acquire means of subsistence. Second, capitalism also uh, represents itself as a society of political freedom. But most individuals being forced by the danger of starving, not having shelter and death, do not have the time and energy to engage in political work. And so the only possible kind of democracy is representational parliamentary democracy in which political power of individuals is invested in others. Now we could say that because economic freedom is understood as a freedom to acquire private property of means of production and to make profit, no real economic freedom or political freedom is possible in capitalism. His representations and values are distorted. Contrary to that, socialism is conceived as a type of organization of society based on existence of real economic freedom, that is economic democracy and absence of structural coercion, and real political freedom, that is participatory democracy. For these two aspects of freedom or democracy to exist, social production must be, as Marx said, uh, direct social production for needs and not indirect social production for the needs 
mediated by profit. Contrary to capitalism, in which capitalist is able to develop production and, and ensure his own existence only if he is able to produce profitably, and laborer is able to survive only if he can work and if he ac accepts to be paid in such a way so that capitalist can make profit, in socialism, actually done work, creativity, and the level of skill of the individual will not be the condition for them to have possibility to satisfy their needs and to subsist. Indirect production for indirect needs mediated pro to fr profit by profit is replaced by socially direct production for needs. That is how we understand socialism. The subsistence and satisfaction of needs of members of society is not conditioned by profitability. There is no ultimatum of profit that says if you don't produce profitably, you will not be able to satisfy your needs. Neither is the progress uh, of development of productive forces or development of productive forces of society stimulated by this uh, condition of profitability. In socialism, satisfaction of needs and development of productive forces is direct, we say. Now, the main question arises, how is this possible? And there are two ways to pose this question, I would say. On the one hand, ideologically, that would be the easy question. And the other, the hard question, is organizational question. Ideologically, the question goes like this. People in their nature are selfish. So the only way to make them work and develop productive power of society is to provide incentive to make profit and force them by danger of that they will not be able to acquire the means of subsistence. To this, uh, we need to answer first with a critique of this ideolo ideology, saying that there is no human nature of this kind and that the, that the present human determination derives from present social relations. Then, secondly, by the critique of this political separation of those motivated and conditioned by incentives and limited by fears, on, and those that motivate them and limit them. Then, thirdly, by a critique of this of economic uh, reproduction, asking are the economic powers developed in capitalist mode of production some kind of neutral powers that could serve any purpose, any society? And in the end, fourthly, uh, asking if the socially constituted needs whose satisfaction capitalism indirectly seeks are the same as the needs of the other kind of society that we strive for. Now the second organizational question, how is socialism possible, how, how to, to go to socialism? Uh, this question, uh, I would say it is much more hard, much harder question, and uh, the answer I would say would, can be found in what Chavez <coughs> calls a socialist triangle. Socialist triangle, as we all know, is the uh, uh, the the triplet of three elements: social ownership, social democratically organized production, for social democratically de determined needs. Now, this is uh, on a very high level of abstraction, but. I would say that these three presuppositions, these three elements, form, as Leibovitz would say, organic system. And that means that if we can have all these three elements at the same time, that would ensure the reproduction of this socialist system, this other kind of system. And if any of these suppositions, presuppositions is missing, we can be sure that uh, we will not arrive at socialism. Uh, but if they are all there, we can expect to have people that are not motivated and limited from the outside, but directly for the producing for the satisfaction of needs, that because of this are not structurally determined to be selfish, that develop only those economic powers that would serve the needs, that are directly socially, and that means not individually, but through community, determined. And that would maybe be socialism. Thank you. Don't want to continue? Uh, <laughs> uh, I would like to put a few remarks uh, that goes also together with uh, what colleagues say and uh, also to reflect something what uh, we already, um, what was already developed. So in this talking about, uh, as colleagues said, uh, it's, the, it's not a problem of market and we cannot observe society only from this direction, but it's the problem of uh, uh, of the whole production, and Marx called it the social production, which uh, have its own uh, subsystems, uh, which are production, uh, exchange, distribution, and uh, consumption. And uh, if we are observing 
either we are talking about capitalism or socialism, uh, we, are, we have to observe it as a social system and as a social production or social reproduction, which have some of um, its elements, and this is the uh, reproduction of material processes, reproduction of productive relations, and the class structure. Um, and all, um, I think uh, uh, we cannot deal only with one element, uh, or to change uh, only one element because all these elements state uh, are um, are structured together. That is also the um, the richness of capital. What is showing us uh, it is uh, uh, that all the elements work uh, together and uh, each one influenced in uh, one uh, in, uh, on each other and uh, that is somehow some uh, organic totality uh, which mostly works contradictions, but it has to be um, harmonized uh, uh, through the whole institutions. So if the second thing, uh, if we are talking about socialism, um, we are not talking about the thing, but we are talking mostly about some uh, social movement of the working class mostly, uh, and uh, which is fighting for its own economic and class uh, liberation. And as a movement, we have to think of the socialism as a process, uh, which uh, is uh, um, which is which is not the close uh, and not closing itself. So we cannot go from some point of uh, uh, from itself, but it have to. We have to think it in a, a global uh, systemic dimension of the capitalistic reproduction, because that is the, the dominance. So uh, mostly socialism also work in the, um, as a process, as a historical also process, uh, and in the as a, some special mode of solving capitalistic contradictions for some more human future of mankind. So uh, that by that we have to be also aware that. Um, when we are uh, saying uh, that socialism as this as a process uh, in its articulation of different mode of production, it is always uh, uh, interwoven. I hope is that your uh, right word. Uh, of it have some capitalistic material basis, some capitalistic logic of development, uh, and uh, it's uh, which is facing with some uh, also historical objective needs of anti-capitalistic fights. Uh, and it uh, that uh, also that process demands somehow uh, this economical rational development of productive forces, democratization of production relations, uh, humanization of lab, uh, working process, uh, equality in disposal with productive production factors, uh, in appropriation and uh, in um, uh, appropriation of products of work. So it has to be also working on all levels, so on economical, political, uh, ideological, social, cultural, uh, and it cannot be, uh, it cannot rest only on one or two um, to separate it from it. Uh, uh, and uh, hi historical socialism, if we take it, real socialism, or how to say, the states that were claimed as uh, socialistic states, uh, um, were um, mostly uh, uh, had that problem uh, of these all levels, that because it was mostly on this political, ideological level. Uh, and here this ideological, um, it's not in this like ideology was based, but uh, each system is ideological system. And um, here I just want to make this remark uh, not to, uh, to get me wrong. But uh, historical uh, socialism also made some great uh, um, social inventions, and that is this formal uh, legal chain of ownership and the change in mode of the distribution and exchange. But it uh, uh, neglect a different um, difference between uh, formal and uh, like formal legal change of ownership and the uh, ownership as a productive uh, production relation. And this production relation includes much more and wider relations uh, of social division of labor, technological and organizational relations in the process of work, special structures of social power of those who direct and control the production relations and decide about the appropriation of surplus labor. So, to make it shortly, uh, the uh, nationalization is not already the socialization. So if the socialization is some, um, some uh, most important also thing, uh, um, if we are talking about something uh, what should be uh, 
socialism, then we cannot, um, we cannot, uh, we have to be aware of something what is capital, uh, uh, Marx and capital is also uh, saying, and this is that there is a, a um, there is a, a process which is necessary from the formal and the real subsumption, and not only uh, labor under capital, but uh, here that is also the, uh, the positive thing about capital is that uh, book capital is that it, you get the elements and the, uh, you get the um, the, m the motion, so also the motion can go. So in this, uh, uh, for example. Um, uh, in the case of uh, historical socialism, the formal subsumption, the formal change of uh, productive uh, relations were made, but it never came to this uh, um, this uh, real subsumptions. And uh, the the main problem was the commodity uh, production, and uh, commodity production was all the time used uh, in each of these economic reforms. Uh, for, and this is what uh, Alexander said, uh, this for achieving some economical efficiency. And here we see also that uh, the system cannot be independent from uh, the other relations. Uh, so, um, and in the, 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 the biggest problem was, was taking commodity and commodity production and the market as, uh, um, which was also the central problem uh, for socialism. It, it was all the time, that way all the time these reforms were going on. Uh, and the, the biggest problem of political economy, of um, Yugoslav political economy, was also this uh, taking a commodity and a market as some neutral uh, mechanisms, which can be um, formally normative, legal normative, uh, um, sub, some, subsumed. subsumed yeah. Uh, to uh, socialistic uh, relations, uh, but they ignored totally the um, economical laws because the commodity in its inner logic, and that is something what Marx uh, teaches us, is um, it, its inner logic, it's also tending always toward the reproduction of capital, uh, least, uh, capital relations. The same as market have the, the same problem, which inner logic is uh, going uh, is tending toward uh, monopolization. So, but we um, here this is not a, uh, I'm not uh, putting it as a critic to, uh, to direct critic what was wrong, but I think these achievements which uh, historical socialism made was uh, um, was great inventions. Uh, just this uh, uh, logic of uh, uh, production, especially in commodity production, which also today we see uh, how um, how it's getting bigger and bigger, especially when we are talking about uh, public sector, when we are talking about uh, all uh, these things that were most uh, uh, long time excluded from commodity production. Um, we have to we have to consider. Uh, how it is made uh, and uh, the problem of production to take it seriously because also commodity production uh, which kind of character it will have it's also historically uh, conditioned and um, also um, the commodity production and the market also have a need for its existence and for their uh, rational functioning need a specific uh, institutional environment uh, and are dependent from it, and that is the this social division of labor, technological bond uh, production, private property, market competition, economical calculation of economy, income as a market realization of value, uh, motivation of extra income, um, consideration about the risk, self-management of commodity producers, which is not the same as uh, social self-management, enterprise, commodity fetishism, class structure, and economical function of state. So all these elements are some uh, moments uh, uh, which have to function harmonized to get also something as a, a capitalistic mode of production. Uh, and uh, um, all these elements also have to ensure that commodity get the value as a result of market mediated uh, social abstract labor. And um, I would say also all these elements are um, possibility uh, gives uh, uh, are places which can be also uh, uh, shift, uh, moved, uh, or uh, changed, and also can be changed. So, uh, and we are talking about uh, 
socialism today, or how to say, uh, yeah, socialism today. Of course, we are not talking about some uh, um, uh, state of things, but we are talking about um, movements. And today we are facing with a lot of different movements, a lot of different uh, um, attempts uh, to overcome uh, the capitalistic mode of production. And uh, from this historical socialism, we can uh, learn two lessons, uh, I would say. And this is one is uh, that it's very necessary um, that taking power and putting <coughs> legal normative um, or legal normative order, let's say so, uh, uh, is uh, that, uh, it's once it's a first just the first step. Uh, but uh, the second is and it's necessary to create a new technological basis to uh, develop uh, uh, new productive forces uh, because they are materialization of some productive relations. Uh, and uh, also to be aware that um, whatever we are doing, whatever kind of subject, and I think that is also very important, um, uh, we are dealing with, <coughs> it is very important how it is made, not only what is, it is made. Uh, because um, this uh, copy-pasting of uh, technological metrics or organizational metrics uh, without any reflection, it's, uh, it's, it uh, drives us uh, directly in reproducing uh, the same capitalistic relation at, uh, as uh, um, it created this matrix also. And the second thing is uh, that we have to be aware all the time, uh, not to be so um, depressed about the things, uh, is that um, <coughs> each system, and that's also the lesson of Capital, uh, each system is uh, uh, created uh, uh, by especially capitalistic mode of production needs all totally different kind of productions for its own um, uh, existence. And uh, it's, uh, um, it, of course, in, so we have uh, a lot of different productions in, uh, in each uh, social unit. So uh, we, uh, um, and the capitalistic one is also uh, defining uh, the conditions for reproduction of this system. So it's very important that uh, through this, uh, um, reading marks give us that to, to recognize also this moment which <coughs> which are actually anti-capitalistic processes uh, as I don't know which are producing solidarity unification uh, some self-management um, social self-management systems and these modes cannot um, these moments cannot be maybe expressed by a, a law of value but that is also the lesson um, for, I don't know, all people who are dealing with political economy, to articulate it, to invent uh, new criteria, new measuring of what is important, what is not, that is maybe what you want to say. Uh, so, uh, to, and <clears throat> through that, uh, to empower it and uh, um, to um, change also, make some real changes. Yes. Domaga is our final speaker. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks for all all your enthusiasts who came today. Uh, so I will I will continue where uh, my previous uh, colleagues have, have stopped. They were talking about how to break the law of value. What uh, social movements uh, are necessary today to you know, to assert, assert the, uh, to assert those principles which will uh, which will. Uh, which will lead to some kind of uh, new, new mode of production. In this short talk, I want to describe what challenges, what challenges await the new left forces, that is, to, re to reconstruct the political legacy of neoliberal capitalism, which left forces will, will have to face inevitably in future battles. In the last 30 years, open and systemic pro-market and pro-capitalist offensive acted devastatingly on the ability of workers to organize, and even to the very concept of solidarity and especially in the last few years of crisis, when it, when it becomes more evident for the austerity measures. These processes have been occurring in different contexts, but common feature was the loss of power of worker resistance and weakening of trade, trade union strength. Context of the restoration of capitalism on the territory of former Yugoslavia had a nationalist and wartime outfit, 
which only emphasized the negative effects of the introduction of the introduction of private ownership of means of production and fanatical hostility to any form of collective organizing, which was considered as the, resi of the, as the residual of Yugoslavia, so-called dungeon of nations. It can be observed during the process of privatization in the 90s, and thousands of factories disappeared, when industrial base was vanishing exponentially, and together with it, the power of trade unions. With the, with the arrival of the new millennium, neoliberal, neoliberal capitalism has lost its uh, nationalist outfit and began to promote corporate culture of personal success. The disappearance of an industry resulted in a sharp rise of service sector, muscle, muscle, muscles protected by trade unions, and the economy was being strongly incorporated in, in international trade agreements for influence of International Monetary Fund, Fund World Bank, and World Trade Organization. Econ economy was suddenly under domination of, of international capital, which operated through privatized banking sector. What is, in, what is important to emphasize here? While neoliberalism in the last 30 years received a powerful impetus, institutions and organizations best equipped and most competent to oppose the disastrous consequences that capitalism manifests completely weakened or even disappeared, and thus disappeared our knowledge of their strategic role. With every new political cycle, we are witnesses to insidious cooperation of political and economic elites, but also the pacification of trade unions, which only adds to distrust of the ability to organize the structure of resistance. And the structures of resistance are what is needed today the most. Whole young generations born since the 80s are growing up in this atmosphere of there is no alternative to capitalism. Witnessing the usual political theater, they are becoming skeptical of possibilities of resistance, distrustful of unions, and distrustful of any organized form of resistance. Therefore, the requirements to introduce the model of direct democracy, often pronounced in radical left-wing circles, becomes a universal answer to every political issue, often, forget, often forgetting that every political resistance requires a certain level of structure and personal discipline, something that right, that right forces are well aware. Thus social movements remain systematically fragmented into pieces that hardly establish a much needed unity, remains open to a number of political manipulations, and workforces stays massively disorganized, imbued with uncertainty, fears, apathy, passivization, increasingly left to the military discipline of market forces, to the law of value. <clears throat> Those who still have jobs are desperately agreeing to continuously, to continuously adapt to the requirements of the ruling class for lower wages, longer hours, erasing social network, only to keep a job for another day, until the, promised economic developed, uh, the, until, uh, until the promised economic development continues where it supposedly it has, it has paused. But they are not left with much more, considering alternative showed in the number of unemployed, especially unemployed, educated, young generation. In such context, even those who contemplate an alternative political approach don't have many opportunities to articulate their intentions because the resistance that occurs comes more randomly, and, it co and when it comes, that there is entire media apparatus to, to, de to, de to, de to de demonize it. This situation limits the development of skills necessary to establish, maintain, and expand the base of resistance. Therefore, what we need are organized structures for which we can spread material support, formal leadership, and direct experience, for which we must build infrastructure to organize a large number of people for collective action. <coughs> It is therefore important for the left to establish cooperation with progressive trade unions in order to cooperate on the joint reconstruction of resistance to the, to that, to the extent that such progressive unions still exist. It is not my intention to express defeatism or articulate bleak tomorrow for the labor and social resistance. Exactly the opposite. I have a great hope, but sober assessment of our current situation must necessarily be the starting point of every effort to progress, of any resistance to strengthen, strengthen of any movement that wants to win. Without broadening the resistance, any building, pro any building, and without broadening resistance and building progressive networks and structures, protest after protest, we will repeat the same platitudes with no visible effects, while the entire political spectrum moves to the right. Draconian austerity policies guarantee a long and painful stagnation, whose burden will be felt, felt most by the, mostly, mostly by the poorest, 
by the economic, but the economic pain will also slowly climb the stairs of class scale. This situation creates a fertile ground for reactionary ideas, especially if progressive forces remain isolated in sectarian interests or misleading fantasies of their own power. Thus, in dire perspective of the moral conflicts, we need to remember all the previous battles, revive the memory of, the resi of the re all the resistance that occurred, of all aggressive all collective actions which defended our jobs. We must again provide a vital driving force to the, to the, concept, of, to the concept of solidarity. It is healthy and productive to draw inspirations and knowledge of combats around the world, celebrate their, celebrate their successes, learn from their defeats, but we cannot live through them. Our victory begins with analysis of current conditions in our context, interpretations deprived of illusions and ultimately of, accept, of acceptance that there is a, long, wrong, a long, long road ahead of us, becoming aware that the sun is getting higher and the road is not getting any shorter. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you, Domogoy, and all the speakers. Now the floor is open for discussion. Uh, yes, Tanimer. Yeah, I have a question, very simple one to you. Uh, you mentioned Chavez, Socialist Triangle, um, and then you mentioned the so-called organic system. Now, I've been to the lecture of Lebovitz, because you also referred to Lebovitz in Ljubljana, and he was interrogated about what he means by organic system. I didn't understand it then, and I don't understand it now. Can you kind of explain what, what's meant by organic system? Because I couldn't help but you know, jump off my seat when I hear organic system. Yeah. Maybe it's my different school, yeah. I don't know. Uh, as I understand it, and this, okay, is, yeah. this is only an interpretation, okay. but I think there is no, no big difference uh, between the notion uh, of totality structure and organic system. Uh, the, the main idea of these three, there are differences, but in the first instance the, the main point is the same. And the point is that capitalism is a system in which all the elements of this system are there to reproduce the whole of the system. And if one of the elements is missing for some reason, maybe the struggle we we, uh, in struggle we succeeded in appropriating, changing, whatever, one element. Capitalism as a system will try to reproduce this element that is missing, to produce it again. And uh, the only possibility of a change uh, of capitalism is the change of all elements. That the system is not, uh, cannot be changed in its nature by the changing of one or two or three elements, but only by changing of them all. Because in dynamic perspective, in the end, it always tends to reproduce itself and to reproduce the elements that are missing for some reason. And that is the, the notion for, for I think, for, for Leibowitz. Uh, the, the notion <coughs> is really derived from, from Marx. It is not uh, his new notion. Because, uh, and I think this, this notion is really important for understanding the, the question of revolution, the question of uh, Marxist politics that is not reformist. And what would mean to, to have a reformist politics or to have a revolutionary politics? But because the revolution in the end uh, means only that we have to tackle uh, with the fact that capitalism is an organic system and that it will in the end reproduce the whole of its elements if it has enough of the elements existing, and that the appropriate evolving of one or two elements will not be enough. And uh, I think that also, and this is the, the last point I want to make here, uh, is that we need to uh, understand that uh, this that the rev revolutionary politics does not mean uh, the change of everything at the same time, because the change of everything at the same time is even not conceivable. The, the idea is that you can take one element from capitalism and change it, or two elements, or change element by element, but uh, you have to be aware that the system will reproduce itself if you don't go on. If you stop at some point, you lose everything, 20, 30 years, whatever. And I think that, that is the, the destiny of welfare state. You go 
from one element to the second element. You 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 take them away from capital capital logic. You you make make uh, uh, the satisfaction of social needs the the uh, uh, and the and the things like that uh, uh, become introduced in, in capitalist system. But then if you stop after 30 years or 40 or 50 years years when historical circumstances change, you have neoliberalism and everything is taken away and capitalism is reintroduced in its full flavor. Okay. Any more questions, comments? I just want to add a little bit on this, uh, on, on this thing about organic uh, uh, system. Like, I think that's a quote from Marx that Lebo is used to legitimate his, this uh, concept that organic system is the one that reproduces its own preconditions. And you know, capitalism that does it in a sense that reproduces uh, uh, the pre its preconditions that, that is uh, that workers are detached from the from the means of production each day goes on. But the interesting thing is that Lebowitz in his essay in 90, from 91, The Socialist Sweater, uh, when he was talking about the socialist organic uh, system, that the precondition for the socialist organic system would be that workers don't treat their, lab, their labor power as their private own, ownership. ownership. And it means that, that, that the production and distribution in distribution of, of uh, wealth or how to call it, to, to satisfy their needs, isn't mediated to, through their capacity to, uh, to work, but through some other kind of social and political uh, uh, mediation. So I think this, this concept of not owning your own uh, labor power as, pre as collectivization of social, that means direct social, uh, social labor, not to isolate your own labor capacities as, as your own, as your Political position, political position in a sense. Yeah, that was, uh, if I may. Uh, that was also you had the problem in a self-management system uh, because you keep this wage labor, which was on the level of distribution uh, uh, socialized, but uh, in the same you had this um, uh, social ownership. Uh, so the means of productions were, but uh, since the labors were privatized, the labor was privatized, like each own individual which was going through the salaries, then you had uh, in the time of crisis, for example, in 80s, you know, all the time, um, for example, when factories, how they were connected with the uh, uh, cities, by uh, also making some uh, um, legally and also uh, economically making a space also, in the first uh, uh, First, this austerity that was uh, cutting, uh, it was the city, so the, the social reproduction to cut. So you keep the factory, which is social ownership, you keep it as a ownership of uh, laborers that are there. And that was also the problem with uh, employing people, because uh, of course you were uh, um, fighting for your employment and uh, if the crisis is coming and uh, the wages are getting lower, of course you will not um, um, uh, open the uh, free spaces. Uh, so in this I think it's really uh, also here connected with this commodity production. And uh, um, he, that's why I say that uh, these uh, uh, productive forces have to be uh, revolutionized uh, uh, because it's uh, going back on the uh, productive relations. And this is also some uh, lesson uh, from socialism. It is uh, also what you said, not one element, but all elements. And this is this organic thing. Uh, and I think also Marx's notion is that, that, it's, uh, uh, that the system is uh, working on different levels uh, the same time through different institutions and uh, all the things uh, are moving and you cannot uh, separate one from another because uh, you hear, here you had this normative uh, social ownership uh, but in reality in a, in a factory was uh, uh, the total uh, the relation the, uh, for example process of labor which was totally uh, defined uh, the same you have um, these documentaries when you, when the workers are saying we worked uh, 12 hours, uh, um, this uh, surplus hours, how to say it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and extra hours, yeah, and all these things. Socialist Sunday. 
Yes. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think we have to take this ironically. We take this because it, it was something also, because also one thing was this playing on the um, social conscience was also very important. Um, and you have to unite it with, but it is a problem, you know, like today, for example, in the public sector, when you're getting this informatization, you get this all uh, new technologies of how to optimize uh, the system and we are copy pasting that we are public sector so we are uh, um, we are for uh, the society and blah, all these things uh, we are copy pasting these new systems which are totally repressive for all consumers totally uh, making new surveillance uh, making uh, the, uh, the labor process is changing we are losing as workers control over the labor process and that goes without uh, uh, it goes without saying you know it's uh, it's something what is uh, uh, reproducing normally so you have all the uh, this uh, all the time this uh, uh, fights uh, um, on this uh, low grade uh, and direct actions anybody has any question ah, okay. I uh, I agree with Lydia but uh, I have I have uh, one remark that um, uh, if, if we if we really if we really consider Yugoslavia in this term of commodity production and uh, and uh, and uh, employing economic efficiency, we then uh, we, we then we, we then can lose uh, uh, or we can relativize the achievements of the of the of the of the Yugoslavia. So. When, when, talk, when, talk, when talking about Yugoslavian commodity production and economic efficiency, we should be we should be well aware that uh, uh, also there was a production of whole of whole sector of uh, of uh, uh, of social goods like uh, social uh, social housing uh, uh, social housing uh, education uh, health uh, that was uh, also also uh, incorporated in this uh, commodity production. So. Uh, yeah, which was socialized, and, and, and that and, is true. But yeah, what and, I want to say, and one more, and one more, and one more, and one more, and one more point. The the law of uh, the law of value in Yugoslavia didn't function through all the for all the historic period of uh, Yugoslavia, uh, especially especially not in the 40s and the early 50s. There was uh, there was uh, there was direct uh, there was direct. Uh, State planning where there is no there is no uh, assertion of a uh, of, uh, law of, of uh, law of value and uh, and uh, sub sub uh, uh, and uh, subsuming the subsuming the the labor under this uh, under this uh, economic uh, economic uh, economic efficiency uh, principles in the in the after the market reforms in the 60s and uh, in the uh, and. Uh, somewhat in the 70s, we can we, we can talk about this. Uh, uh, we can talk about introduction of a law of value, but not in that sense of a, cap a capitalist law of value. So, so that was yeah, my, my remark. But what is with uh, foreign markets? Okay, I just want to point out. Yeah, I agree with you. It was, and also when we are dealing with Yugoslavia, we have to take the lesson. Not to glorify one thing or uh, to uh, I don't know pluk or uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, what I want to say yes for example in this so um, um, apartments and uh, city building you have this uh, these contradictions even more you can see because it was socialized but in the eighties for example each uh, factory wanted to get rid of uh, its duties to uh, to uh, to city to producing this social environment so here uh, I think it's very necessary uh, to to look uh, um, uh, closely this commodity production which was socialized but in historic perspective in historical perspective of course yeah because uh, like I said uh, also uh, what uh, in Yugoslavia happened this self-management and all these attempts that were that were really uh, great social inventions also and uh, great attempts uh, but they were just uh, how to say not enough in so it, that's why I said that socialism is a process and it's also something what is going on right now uh, to uh, through all these fights uh, fighting for public sector fighting for uh, um, education and uh, all kind of the, uh, fighting for a space also 
um, in cities. Uh, so, but I think only that we should look on these uh, uh, moments uh, which were not reflected also, and why and how uh, how it could uh, how um, how it works because I know also you have you had said triangle but also this triangle uh, that was economical laws commodity production and uh, um, self management uh, relation production relations uh, if you uh, watch this through this uh, I don't know through this, through that we have to learn some uh, pr productive things uh, uh, for some I don't know action like you said. Okay. Uh. <laughs> um, I only heard the last two speakers, so just stop me if this was addressed by the first two. But you both appeal to social movements, and I think we're all on the same page about that. But I wonder if you could say a little bit about the actual prospect for social movements in Kurdsko Slavonia, the God. Um, just because I, I feel like it's maybe, maybe a bleaker than we want to admit, and particularly in terms of sort of the NGOization of the left yeah. and of radical grassroots yeah. social movements. So just if you, anyone has thoughts on that, I would love to hear it. Uh -huh. I have to tell for Slovenia to report. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, I'm just saying. Any, any of you who want to speak. No, 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 but uh, I think uh, uh, what you said at last, uh, uh, this, um, so I wanted to put that question to you also. Uh, that it's not a, um, what is actually a social movement? That is the, uh, the first question. So it's not only the, um, you, uh, it's not only people on the street. Uh, but uh, how this uh, class struggle is uh, leading also, we have to look in institutions, in uh, like trade uh, uh, organized, formally organized, uh, and also these informal also organizations, and uh, all these kind of initiative, initiatives and so on. One uh, big problem, what I see is this NGOization of uh, social movements. And in this NGOization, I think, uh, it's not the problem who is uh, uh, who is what uh, and this, but the problem is in the mode of production. Because when you are one time on the founding system, and the founding system is the most destructive system uh, that can be, um, for example, public sector, right now it's uh, uh, deeply in uh, problems because the state want to get rid of it and uh, to, uh, to put it, uh, the whole public sector, in, uh, um, in this project working which uh, brings uh, total contradiction inside of institution because of that. And in this injuization, I think uh, the problem is, is not uh, what they are uh, allowing you what to do, but how? What can, you know, um, this uh, um, problem of funding is a problem of uh, infrastructure, problem of the form. You know, when you are doing something, like we are here, we are now in conference and all this, uh, this is a form which uh, have, uh, have uh, some uh, other, um, how to say, effects, uh, then I don't know, some uh, grassroots form which is, uh, and uh, in this uh, um, this founding project working, uh, it's the most dangerous is that uh, in what kind of form they are putting you to work, you know, they deal, they say, uh, yeah, you have to make a conference, yeah, you, you must make uh, this or this, uh, yeah, we are not, uh, we are not uh, funding infrastructure. What each movement needs, and this is a, a fight for a space, each movement, each whatever you're doing, you need a space. And uh, this, for example, um, if you are not a squatter, it's really hard to get uh, these space problems. Uh, and uh, founders are mostly not. The second thing is uh, the way of uh, employment in the founder. For example, in a science, you have that uh, in a science field, um, NGO uh, production of knowledge totally destroyed the, uh, the mode of production of uh, uh, knowledge on the scientific institutions. They stopped, uh, yeah, they started this to do uh, that you, you cannot, on, only um, institutions stop employing people for this permanent, uh, also faculty stop uh, for this permanent. So this mode of production uh, is the worst thing what uh, it comes with funding and with uh, uh, NGOs. 
So my point is that it's not the problem if you're financed by a state, by a um, by uh, this. Um, how is Congress the specific? Um, Congress where you are applying for money. It doesn't matter already if you're applying for a state for public institution or some private donors uh, or uh, whatever. It is the problem of form in which you are um, put to work. And also that, I think it is the problem of social movements, especially those who are grassroots, and mostly they are then, um, how to say it, uh, overtake, took? Overtake. Overtake. Yeah, 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 this tekunization a little bit of the movement, you know, you just take and, um, you, yeah, and start to, uh, cooptation, yeah. Uh, uh, to, to speak in the uh, name and for example that is something uh, but this is uh, my opinion um, so <laughs> okay very subjective uh, but for example that is what is happening for um, what happened in Slovenia there was protests beginning in uh, November and then it was a rise um, rise up of all kind of uh, groups uh, talking in the name of this uh, atomized uh, mass, which was totally not organized, uh, that's also, that is the problem, uh, which uh, only present uh, the rage of people who are uh, really disturbed uh, by what uh, is happening because we all feel these austerity measures and uh, then uh, um, it was not coordination but it was now, for example, it was this uh, Something like uh, all groups uh, came in Sankari of Dom, <laughs> the main this uh, uh, culture, um, 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 culture. Uh, they are not even producers. They are uh, like um, uh, this uh, shopping mall for culture, and um, and uh, there they had a different group talks uh, what to do now with protests, and uh, uh, they are speaking in the name. And this connection is totally disconnected. <coughs> So that is my opinion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If would, I may. Would others like to, to answer to this question as well? Well, okay, I can say few yeah. remarks, and but then, if that, that has any questions. Okay. When, uh, when Michael Lebowitz was here, he was talking about uh, uh, a rise of uh, social movements in Latin America, and he was saying that the that's true, and that is true. That there was uh, no no social web, no 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 social provision, uh, provisions like a welfare state in Europe. So people uh, people were uh, people were uh, were basically under uh, under this uh, uh, yeah, under this uh, imposement of a neoliberal uh, neoliberal measures. So 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 tight that there there there, uh, there wasn't any, any anything else for them to do than than to oppose. In Europe, we still have a strong, uh, a strong social provisions so that is welfare state, and uh, in uh, and in Croatia there is uh, still uh, this illusion of uh, European Union uh, as a as a as a space or as a mechanism as a mechanism which which will uh, which will bring uh, some uh, some kind of pros uh, prospect. So. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to uh, sound rough, but uh, uh, um, I, uh, but uh, I think there is uh, there there <laughs> there there will there will be needed uh, uh, much uh, uh, much more pain for the people to uh, get get rid uh, to get rid of uh, this uh, to get rid of this illusion, and for the left there is uh, for the left the. Uh, the um, what 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 uh, what uh, what awaits what awaits the left is to to put some kind of a platform. So when the when the moment so when the moment comes when we when we uh, when we when we stop to be def uh, when we stop to be defensive about uh, about the uh, about the uh, welfare state and and uh, come to attack the capitalist mode of production to have this platform to uh, to to present to the people so so that they uh, so that they, they don't move to the right and uh, to to put some kind of alternative in that in that in that moment that which each our actions what we are doing we are producing we are in some labor process and it's very important to keep these reflections what and how we are doing also on our, I don't know, 
uh, working place. For example, it, it was also a big problem for uh, strike of public sector that we had, and it was, um, uh, the biggest problem was, it was all the time this talk, like, uh, to keep the free services and all this, uh, and it was, uh, I liked it very much when the, um, this, uh, what is he, main secretary uh, of uh, public sector, of uh, this uh, education public sector, said, uh, it's not about our payments, and it's not also everything about money. It's not. It's not. We don't need public sector because it's for free. We are not talking about it, but because we are making some different quality, and that is the quality public sector is making. It is that is uh, access to everyone that uh, uh, needs uh, uh, what uh, serves to some needs of uh, the whole society. And that, I think, is very important to, um, on all, uh, on this uh, um, institutional structure, what? Uh -huh. And this is institutional structures that are existing already to, uh, to work uh, uh, on them in this everyday practice. I don't think uh, uh, some moment will come when we can come out. <laughs> but you, you, okay, you, sorry. First Doma and then Sasha and then we uh, return to power. <laughs> but you, you cannot fasten the social conditions for the, for the uh, political, political economic uh, change. You, you, simply you have to, uh, you have to, you have to, you have to be, you have to uh, prepare the, uh, the concrete platform for that, uh, for that conditions to, to uh, uh, for that, to, uh, for that conditions when they are, when they are right. So, uh, Simply, uh, simply, um, simply don't, uh, don't don't see uh, don't, don't see a movement if they if there is not uh, there, if there if there is not a prepared uh, prepared ground uh, prepared ground uh, in uh, in in sense of. Uh, uh, in terms of developed 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 infrastructure developed the programs uh, develop, uh, developed. Um, Developed uh, cadre, developed cadres to uh, to, uh, to 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 be prepared to take power when that uh, when that social conditions really arise. Yeah, but I really don't know when they arrive. For example, you see uh, when well, the, social the social conditions are, are, st are still strong in Europe, and and uh, and, peop and people will, uh, will, uh, will not will not uh, take this uh, jump uh, for for the for the anti 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 anti, anti, anti capitalist movement uh, sudden. It, it's it's a it's a historic process. Okay, okay. we'll perhaps return to that later. Uh, Sasha, want yeah, to add something? Just just one thing. Uh, uh, two things. First, uh, about the, the social givings in Europe, um, I, I think that this, uh, this really depends how to, how to interpret the fact that uh, in the uh, uh, in difference to Latin America, like in Europe you have some kind of social givings, and do they pacify or do they tend to radicalize? I think this, is, this really depends. It doesn't mean, even, even uh, Leibovitz when he was here, he said uh, maybe the, the fact that you had some kind of social spending, social giving in this part of the world uh, could, be, uh, could be used uh, politically in a productive way. Maybe that is a positive thing because you can, uh, you can, uh, you can try to uh, make people remember what they had or what they are losing at the moment. Uh, and then they could maybe be more politicized and so on. So I'm not sure that this fact really uh, uh, that this fact uh, in a necessary way uh, is negative or positive for the struggle that we, 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 can, uh, we can have, we can lead here. Because uh, it, can, it can be positive, it can be negative, it really depends. And, uh, and the other thing I wanted to, about the NGOization of the struggle or the, the role of NGOs, I think that Lydia's comment was, I, I agree totally with it, and the fact that NGO is a form is a, the, the fact that we have to uh, insist on, and maybe the, the illuminating way to think about it is to say, okay, uh, what would happen if in the first part of the 20th century, uh, in the class struggle, we had NGOs in, instead of politicized syndicates. Would we, would we have, uh, even if you say, okay, the welfare state is, uh, has all the, all the kinds of, of bad 
uh, bad things in it, but uh, in the end, would we, would we have even the welfare state if the NGOs were leading the struggle and not the politicized syndicates? And now I don't want to say that syndicates that we have or the maybe even the, the ideal syndicates that we could have are the, the, the alternative now, but I think this kind of uh, question could, uh, could uh, illuminate the, this role, this limitation uh, that NGOs by definition have. And, uh, and maybe uh, take us to, to, to think of different forms. Okay, Lydia, quickly, but yeah. Stanley Merck has been waiting for a long time. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Okay, but I would like uh, just to refer on you. I think we should not demonize NGO as NGO. Yeah. NGOs are also our association. Some, the problem with NGO, it's the, that they were first as a form also of, um, how to say, um, uh, association of people, uh, yeah, um, was uh, firstly, the problem is that they were uh, first uh, who were forced in some particular mode of production and that is this capitalistic, you know, how they were achieved. For example, also I think some work that they are doing and also NGOs, uh, some, uh, um, some things are um, legally normative uh, uh, registered as NGO but the way of producing it is totally different so I think when we are talking this NGOization I think we should talk about how making things not to demonize one or another because also for example in a trade unions you have the same uh, also that problems missing some inner problems different but uh, uh, I just want to make this remark that not the NGO is not the devil on itself, but mm. because of the situation and uh, uh, how it is put in society. <laughs> but devil for itself. For itself. <laughs> not sabi. In and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> not sabi. <laughs> okay, now back to the audience. Uh, Stanimir, I think you have a question. Or if anyone else has a question, I can wait. Uh, yes. Doesn't happen. <laughs> I think nobody does. So. Yeah, uh, I know NGOs are not the subject of uh, and, uh, of this discussion, but there is a whole political economy of non-governmental organization which is going on, and just now people are starting to to research it in, in a more elaborate way. And what I wanted to say, especially in regard to something you said, it's, it was, you said something very particular which I totally don't agree with. You said that the NGO research is subverting the, the academic research. You know, you said something what? like that. You said that the NGO produced research is subverting the role of the university and what sort of knowledge is produced in the university. Uh, no, 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 no. I was so not, maybe I no, no, no. I was talking only about uh, how uh, is the production is going because, for example, you have institute, private institutes, who are uh, funding, uh, who are found uh, from under some and they're working on the project and you have these uh, public institutions where uh, uh, normally on institution scientific institution was you are uh, going through this uh, whole uh, becoming okay. uh, PhD and all this and then you get permanent uh, also employment then and then you had your research what you were doing and also particular knowledge and uh, so on and so on but then, for example, in the uh, uh, 90s, at least in uh, um, Slovenia was like that, uh, a lot of studies, a lot of um, researches were done on this level of the project making, as a project making, and was mostly done by new institutes yeah. who were registered as NGOs, uh, non-governmental institutions, uh, uh, organizations, pardon, and uh, who had totally d d different, so you, they were not, you don't have on them uh, permanent employed people, but you, ha you have opportunity if you get some money to go there uh, as an institutional support to give you for, I don't know, three years, four years, how many it is. That, for example, influenced also uh, on the public institutions uh, with uh, all uh, this, uh, uh, um, how to say, it, from 2000, 2005, for example, uh, or 2000, maybe a little bit before, they stopped employing people for uh, permanent uh, employment making, but started to work on the same founding thing, uh, 
uh, making uh, researches uh, by funds and so on. That is what yeah, I want um, to say. My point was, okay, I understood it now. My point is anyway, the people who are producing knowledge from the NGO sector are very much the same agents who works in the universities. It's all over the place like that, you know. Yeah, at, least, at least this is the picture I have. Um, why I'm saying this, you say that the NGOs are a question of form. And I agree with that. What sort of form is that? It's power form. I think it's important to say that. Power because form? It's a power form. It's a form of power. It's a way of influencing you know, the political conditions <laughs> in the present. Uh, especially where I come from, in Bulgaria, this was, this was the case. You know? The whole welfare state was transferred onto the NGOs you know, in the yeah. 1990s yeah. and onwards. And yeah. I'm sure this is yeah. the case in many other countries. Yeah. Yeah. You know? uh, so, Therefore, you can easily say that the so-called post-socialism post and transition, you know, had it politi it, its political constituency outside government. You know. Yeah, you, know. you didn't understand me when I said form. I was not uh, talking. I was talking about the production form. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Not uh. about what is their role, and that's why I said that okay. NGOs we should not take as a devil because. Some things, what we're uh, dealing, especially in transition, right. uh, my experience also from Slovenia is that some things that were also, some teams also, that were developed also mostly through uh, NGOs this, uh, or non-institutional sector, uh, were uh, totally abandoned from this uh, public, uh, legal, state, whatever. Um, so that's why I just mentioned that we should not uh, dem uh, dem uh, make it, uh, de demonize it. Uh, but which just with problems in NG NGOization is just this how you are doing things in the production way, not uh, in the um, in the um, teams or subjects uh, or political appearance also. Because for example, in Slovenia, concretely, a lot of things uh, that uh, uh, were formed through NGOs uh, would never come on. Uh, on the plane, political as political agenda, if they were not already uh, culminated through these uh, uh, organizations. I think we have time for one more question before our time runs out. So, any further questions, comments? Yes. Please. I just wanted to comment. It was mentioned a couple of times that socialism is a process, which I, of course, fully agree with. But it can, there's a danger for it to become an excuse. So I think we have to insist on this um, notion of socialism as an organic system, or at least as a process tending towards uh, um, um, an organic system, because uh, you, can, you can have bad processes and good processes. So if you establish some kind of a process, there's no guarantee it will ever lead to a socialism that is capable of, of uh, reproducing itself. So I, I don't really see um, uh, any kind of uh, um, antagonism here between notion of organic system and as a process. Because even if you say socialism as, a, as an organic, or if you don't like this metaphor, as a total or uh, a self-enclosed system, uh, that, that doesn't mean it is static. Of course, it's dynamic, it's in full development, but there is an urgent need to think uh, socialism as a kind of, uh, precisely as a kind of system that is capable of reproducing itself uh, in a kind of um, spontaneous way. And I think this, this was why the, the historical socialism, this, this was their main mistakes, or I uh, think they were not capable of achieving their own reproduction. That's why they fell apart. I mean, uh, there was IMF pressure and debt crisis and so on, but there was also in, in, in in endogenous reasons why they fell apart, precisely because they, they could not develop institutions uh, to, to reproduce themselves. So I think that the main danger is to just be, to, to satisfy too quickly, you know? Like say, like in, uh, you know, when there, uh, there were jokes about it in Soviet Union, uh, in all of Eastern Europe, about this communism on the horizon, and then he said, but we still have wage labor, you know? Uh, workers are still separated from the means of production. They can only enter social production in exchange for a wage. You still had consumerist alienation, 
but but with shortages and, and no choice in the supermarket, so there were cho there were jokes about it. Basically, it, uh, but ever then the politician, the party politician, would say, "But you know, be patient. It's a process. You know, they said <laughs> we still have consumerism, but without any any consumer choice, uh, everything looks the same. We still have wage labor. We still have a, a law of value. But they say, you know, it's a process. Just wait. For, you know, it's like in a in a bad relationship. You don't really feel well. You want to get out, but then you talk to each other. You know, it's a process." <laughs> <laughs> you know, so this is the danger I want to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I agree with that. That is a cynical distance that uh, you can get. Uh, but I think also uh, the problem was also that they were not developing on this theoretical and uh, political. Uh, uh, that was the problem, of, for example, taking market as a neutral thing. Uh, in a, that was academic also debates. You know, and also for this, I maybe I have to apologize to Domago. I don't think it's uh, it's uh, this uh, making some platform and uh, producing also the knowledge uh, in or organizational skills and all these things. I think that is very necessary uh, to have some uh, base of that. Uh, but what I wanted to say also, it is um, um, this awareness that also all the time in which. Each thing you are already involved. Uh, what it's not excluding. I think these two things are not excluding uh, of uh, the mode of working, because there, uh, in socialism, you had yeah one on one side you have this uh, growing up cynicism of uh, normal uh, uh, relations, uh, these everyday relations. But on the other side, you have also this uh, lack of uh, um, uh, 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 the theoretical attempts to overcome and to solve some theoretical problems because uh, this commodity production is not some uh, only practice not some practical but it's also the theoretical and also the knowledge uh, problem okay, Sasha and Marco yeah, just just a small small uh, thing I wanted to mention uh, I think that here uh, with with the notion of organic system and the the, the social trans transformation the transformation of society towards socialism uh, we get why uh, uh, Leibovitz al always insists on uh, contested reproduction. Because uh, when he says <coughs> contested reproduction, the idea of trans social trans transformation towards socialism is uh, uh, happening through contested reproduction. He says, okay, we have two logics. The capitalist logic, the logic of organic system trying to reproduce itself, the capitalism, the old system, and the new system, uh, socialism that also needs to be organic, that also needs to develop all the elements necessary for the reproduction of the system as a whole. And uh, uh, then, with, with this notion, we uh, can uh, uh, derive that uh, this compromise, political compromise within the, uh, within, uh, within the socialist politics, the, within the prog progress towards socialism, uh, is, uh, is very questionable. Because Compromise uh, in in the elements that are necessary for the organic system, the making compromise with capitalism is the thing that will kill you, that will sure, for sure kill you. That is the, that is maybe the main uh, the main consequence that we can here observe. Uh, the idea is uh, like with Yugoslavia, uh, you uh, have some some elements that are changed, uh, like nationalization, social property, and so on. But on the other hand. Uh, you say we need uh, uh, we need some some kind of some some measure of uh, capital to work. We don't know how to do it uh, any other way, and uh, we need IMF funding. So we will uh, we will leave uh, market untouched, or we will leave market uh, in system at all. So uh, in the end, you have that market as the element of this opposed organic system, capitalism reproducing the system, trying to uh, to uh, to for once more to produce the elements that were that were changed, and uh, there there is the this slogan that that Leibovitz likes to man mention. He says, "When capitalism goes, capital goes on strike, giving or moving," which means uh, at the moment when uh, when uh, the production uh, in a society stops because uh, the, the conditions for capitalist production, for profitable production, are not uh, anymore uh, existing, 
there you don't you have uh, two possibilities one is to make a compromise to say okay we will uh, diminish the social givings the social spending the taxes whatever and uh, if you do that, it's over. Or you can, uh, at that moment, uh, derive the, the other possible conclusion, that is that you have to, uh, to move in in that part of the production in society. And to, to, to destroy another element of the capitalist logic and to, to change it with, with the socialist. Mm -hmm. I just want to add uh, uh, one remark when we are... Uh, I, I <coughs> Evaluating uh, achievements of real existing uh, socialism of its failures, we really uh, it's it's all, all well known, but we uh, we should not really uh, uh, neglect the historical conditions where it appeared and when it appeared. Mm -hmm. Just imagine a situation in Yugoslavia in 1948 after the breakup uh, with Stalin. There is no other thing. The situation, the backward country, the per percentage of illiteracy is around 80 uh, percent. There. There was obvious need to import the, the capital, uh, the capital goods. There was need to some kind of dependence. There was thinking in, in relation to Soviet Union, it would it not be dependence but uh, cooperation, and they, they needed the help f f from the uh, from the West. So I think the, the failures of the uh, real existing, exact, really exact, existing socialism are not failures of intellectual or political capacities or incapacity of its leaders. Of course, there were lots of these <laughs> incapacities, but they're, they're, they're emerged from the concrete economical uh, conditions. And you, when you uh, talk about Yugoslavia till the 60s with these great, great, great growth rates and all that stuff, but till the end of the 50s you had aid from the USA, but then uh, uh, the Americans came to Berger and said, no more aid, now you have to take loans with interest rates. So it's, it's really di different. It's, it's easy to, to look at that as an intellectual, intellectual history of a party cadre, but it's much more, much more important to see on what uh, problems and contradictions the party was reacting to. So just Okay, our time is up. Thank you all for an excellent discussion. I think we can continue it in more informal matter. A big round of applause.